Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Conlon coming to you with your NXT review exhaustingly on Thursday, July 23rd, 2020. Like I said, today has been a very long day for your boy today. Got up at 5.30 this morning, went to work, came home took a rest, watched NXT, then I had other shit to do, which I won't say here, and it's 5 o'clock, and I'm finally, I'm finally getting a chance to review my NXT today, so I'm very happy about that, but I also gotta apologize about something real quick, I know, I know, I've been slacking on my NXT reviews, because if I, I've had work the past two couple Thursdays, the past two Thursdays I had work, for eight hours, so I have not been able to film NXT for you guys, and I sincerely apologize for that, and I feel like I've been slacking on that, but I think I'm going to find a way, if I work Thursday or not, I will find a way to get you guys your NXT review. If it's going to be late at night, at around 9 o'clock, or if it's going to be early in the morning, like around 10 o'clock, you guys will get your NXT review. And I promise you that. Or today, like a five like a five o'clock. So I promise you from now on, you will get your NXT reviews on every Thursday. Work or no work for me. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. But with NXT tonight or last night, it was a good show. I will admit, NXT was a good show this week. But we got a lot to dive into with the NXT review. And I'm not only diving into the NXT review. Actually, before the NXT review, we might as well talk about this now. So, let's talk about it. Last night on the AEW post show, with it was Jim Ross, Taz, and Excalibur. And they had a post show for last night's Dynamite. Awesome show last night. If you guys missed that review, make sure you go check that out. Um, then they talking about WWE and NXT. And a lot of people, a lot of people, we got a lot of Karens in the community. Because a lot of people got actually offended by what Taz and Jim Ross said. Excalibur really took the back seat for this one. But a lot of people got offended by what Taz, what Taz and Jim Ross had to say about WWE, the way they run things, and the NXT on Thursday night. And I'm actually going to play the clip for you. I screen recorded the clip of what Taz and Jim Ross said in the post show. So I'm going to play for you guys right now, and then I'll give you guys my thoughts on it. You know, this is going to sound real uh, ass-kissing, but why is there even a choice on Wednesday night? You know, DVR in NXT. Watch it later. Our shit's better. And I'm proud to be able to say that. And it's not in defiance, it's just in reality. I don't remember the last time I even watched that show. That's no bullshit. I really don't give a rat's ass about it. I respect the men and women there, you know, that are bump, bumping and working, but I, I'm not trying to be a homer. I don't give a shit if someone thinks I am, but I just, I'm so locked into what we do, I really don't give a rat's ass, so... That oh, boy, you know that. that that's, sorry, that's you a, know, man. That's a that's a losing yeah, thing on, on the official AEW channel. You know, I mean, the, whatever. But, but, I, I, but I know, but what are you gonna do? I mean, no, I, no. I, no I, but I, that, that's the thing. I, that's what I meant. The passion from every single person that steps. Well, here's the, the deal, man. You think you think any of those TV shows, those online shows, the streaming shows that WWE does, they would ever mention us? Oh. Shit, no. Oh. They're they're arrogant. Oh. They're omnipotent. They're the they, king they, they, uh, Yeah, I... I so I, I, we, I, here's us going on our YouTube channel, trying to build this entity. Here's us going on Wednesday night on TNT, trying to build that brand. And I mention guys all the time that had WWE backgrounds. So fucking what? Yeah, and I'll it's tell you, it's one other thing on that, and you'll get some people that'll make comments on the YouTube gimmick where they make comments. I'm like, oh, there it is again. AEW complaining about WWE. No dumb shits. What we're doing is we're not insulting your intelligence and we're acknowledging WWE. Okay? They are the ones insulting your intelligence. We bring them up because they're... The 
So that was the clip I had to show you guys from last night's AEW post show. And I'm, I, I gotta give my thoughts on this. I, I actually got a, quite a few things to say about this. First of all, if you're offended by this, if you're butt hurt by this, if you are a crybaby about this, you're, you're a complete idiot and you're a Karen in the community. You're soft. I'm sorry. You are soft if you're offended by what Jim Ross and Taz said in this post show. Did what they say was wrong? Are they wrong? Absolutely not. Everything they said was right. NXT is good. NXT is good. But it doesn't feel the same like it did two or three years ago or even last year. And AEW Dynamite is better than NXT. And in my opinion, they didn't go as far as saying this. But in my opinion, AEW Dynamite is better than NXT. And it's not even close. It's not even close. Dynamite is better by a long shot. People can complain in the ratings. Oh, NXT. When NXT beat Dynamite and uh, the Fighter Fest ratings. Oh, NXT crushed Dynamite in the ratings. So what? Okay, so what? Dynam uh, 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 Fighter Fest was lost in the ratings to Great American Bash. So what? They, de they destroyed Great American Bash. Show quality. That show was so much better than Great American Bash was. I'm not saying Great American Bash was bad. It was solid. But Fighter Fest was just on another level to what Great American Bash did. And then you want to have you have Taz go on there and say, uh, what, "We're not insulting the the AEW audience does not insult our intelligence." They're actually acknowledging WWE because, like Jim Ross said earlier, he backed Jim Ross up by saying, Jim Ross said that on their shows, the WWE Network shows, their, their television shows, you know, you guys know Raw, SmackDown, would WWE ever mention other, another wrestling company or AEW in this matter? Absolutely not. They wouldn't mention them. They're petty. They think they're the only wrestling company in the world. They think they're the only wrestling company in the entire world. Then Taz backs it up and says, Shit, what'd he say? He said, oh, he said, yeah. Uh, AEW doesn't out insult our fans' intelligence. We're actually acknowledging WWE and owning up to the situation. They are the ones insulting your intelligence. And they are absolutely right. WWE insults our intelligence every single week. Monday, sometimes Wednesday, and Friday. So for you guys to be upset over this situation and be offended and be like, Oh, well, AEW is a minor league company. Oh, Jim Ross is definitely going to want to go back to the WWE later on in his career. Uh, they, all they do is take shots at WWE. Oh, this and that. You can say whatever you want. If you get offended by this, I think you are a, just, you're, you're a loser. You are really a loser. And just own up to the fact that Dynamite's better. Just own up to the fact that your show... That you, you got a new cool... It, it's just like the cool kid. I'm going to tell you the situation, okay? There's this one cool kid who came into my school uh, for my freshman year. And he came in around April. His name's Brody. He came in. Everybody started talking to him. Everybody wanted to be friends with him. Everybody was hanging out with this kid named Brody. And then the other kids, the other kids who were cool, no one was talking to them anymore. And, uh, and they got ignored. And, and people didn't enjoy them anymore. And they wanted to hang out with the new kid. That's this situation. AEW is that new kid that everybody wants to watch. While 
WWE, they're old and, you know, they, they got the 50 plus year olds. They can stick to their WWE. You want to stick to your WWE television, watch your kids' entertainment, watch your garbage Raw and SmackDown, watch NXT. I'm not saying NXT's bad, I love NXT. But watch your garbage Raw and SmackDown, get your insult, intelligence insulted, all that stuff. That's all I'm going to say on this situation. I want to dive into the NXT review because I believe we're close to 10 minutes into the video, if not 10 minutes into the video already. But as for the NXT review, there's really only going to be two things I mainly talk about. The rest, I'm just going to fly by through. Um, Keith Lee. Keith Lee cut a promo earlier at the first, the beginning of the the uh, the episode of NXT, and he said he will proudly defend his new NXT championship as long as he can. But as for the NXT North American Championship, he thinks it's it's time for others to seek opportunity like he had. So he said, "I am relinquishing." The NXT North America Championship. And that, my friends, that right there is some dumb shit right there. That is dumb. Why? Why? Why would you book a winner take all between Adam Cole and Keith Lee in your main event of Night 2 of Great American Bash only for Keith Lee? To drop one of his championships and then go on to lose the championship he so proudly wants to defend, he's gonna lose it to carry across at the next takeover, which is the main announcement. Like I said on social media, it's probably gonna be a takeover. I actually thought it was gonna go up against All Out, but it's not. It's gonna be August twenty second. That's the night before SummerSlam. So. That was the big announcement by William Regal. We're getting NXT TakeOver 30 um, SummerSlam weekend. Uh, that should be a pretty good, on good show. But um, as for this, this is this is dumb. Why would you book Adam Cole and Keith Lee? Double champion. Why would you give Keith Lee this big moment? Just for him just to straight up give away one of his championships. And then lose his NXT championship. In his first defense, uh, oh, actually, he defended it against Dijakovic last week. My bad. But his first, his first non-double title defense, you're gonna have him defend his just the NXT Championship, and you're gonna have him lose. So what you're doing is you're taking away the North America Championship for Keith Lee, and you're basically just setting up Keith Lee to be a transitional champion. Out of all people, you're going to make Keith Lee, a man who's busted his ass in NXT, who is over in NXT, who could, should have been the NXT champion for months now. You're going to make him be a transitional champion and drop the title to Karrion Cross, who literally just got to the goddamn brand in NXT. That's dumb. That is absolutely dumb. It's stupid. I'm not a fan of it whatsoever. Uh, if, like I said, I don't want to repeat myself because you guys are gonna get, uh, you guys are gonna get sick of me saying this. But if you were gonna book, a, if you were gonna do this, why book a double title match? Why book a winner take all match with Adam Cole? You realistically did this not for a long term story, not to develop Keith Lee, not to give Keith Lee a big moment. You did this so you can counter program Fighter Fest. And this is why I went on a rant a few weeks ago when I did an NXT review that they were desperate against Fighter Fest. And this shows here they are desperate. They were desperate, folks. This goes back to the Jim Ross situation. Our shit's better. People should be watching Dynamite. Our shit's better. This is a this is a main roster maneuver right here from NXT. And I freaking hate it. Now I'm heated. Now I'm heated. Between the 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 uh the thing I talked about earlier with Jim Ross and Taz 
and this Keith Lee relinquishing the North American Championship, which is so dumb. And this is another thing I didn't bring up, which I tweeted about. If you're going to have Keith Lee not be the North American Champion, at least have him put someone over instead of straight up relinquishing the championship. At least have him. Somebody put him, uh, at least have him put somebody over. Have him put over Dexter Loomis. Have Karrion Cross come out. Have Dex and cross Keith Lee his North America Championship. Keith Lee could have passed out to Dexter Loomis. And Dexter Loomis would be the North American Champion. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. You could have made it so simple. Instead, you made it difficult. Speaking of Dexter Loomis, he opened up the show with Killian Dean. That was the opening match. Uh, I didn't take notes for NXT. I'm going to get back to note-taking uh, for next week, Dynamite and NXT. Um, this match was very good. Uh, two big guys just going at it. Dexter Loomis has been impressive if, and lately. Dexter Loomis... Kicked out of Dane's finisher, I believe. Then put him in his um, choke slam into his submission hold. And Killian Dane passed out. Very good match. This was great for Dexter Loomis. I'm actually going to talk about Dexter Loomis once I get done the triple threat match. The first qualifying match to participate in the Fatal 5-Way. Um, I think it's just the Fatal 5-Way, right? I don't think this is stipulated. I think, yeah, it's just a fatal five word. I'm going to talk about Dexter Loomis once I get to the triple threat match to uh, for a takeover in that fatal five word. Brizango versus Everrise. Um, Brizango did another cringe, uh, corny entrance. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, a lot of people, I don't know their views on these Brizango entrances, but I'm not a fan of them. I find them cringe. Uh, they're not funny whatsoever. They came out as Emporium against Imperium for the tag team titles, and now they're doing this uh, cringy Canadian stuff against Everrise. I, I hated it. I no, I fast for the match as well, just to save time. Of course, Brizango won the match. They'll probably do something at TakeOver for the tag team titles, but uh, we'll have to see what, what, they're, what they're doing. Um, Shati Blackheart versus Aaliyah. I mean, this match was fine. It wasn't too special. It wasn't bad. Aaliyah looked decent in this match. She wasn't as bad as usual. But, um, the shit with Robert Stone. Robert Stone's gotta get off TV. I, I can't stand it. I refuse. Okay. Catch my breath. As I might get heated here. I refuse to think that Triple H is writing this storyline with Robert Stone. This is one of the worst storylines in NXT in years. Do you know how atrocious this storyline is? You dropped, you made Chelsea Green break up with Robert Stone for what? For what? Where's Chelsea Green at? Is she in catering? Is she stuck at home with uh, Matt Cardona? Because I don't think so. What the hell did you break up Chelsea Green and Robert Stone for? For this garbage with Robert Stone. And this whole Aaliyah thing. And I heard that Robert Stone got ran over by a, a tank last week from Shotzi Blackheart. Which is not funny at all. And then he got ran over at the end of the match. Which is just horrible. And he was walking... You know, he was walking like a like a moron with his boot, and he couldn't walk on the steps. He had straight legs. Uh, he knocked, she got knocked over when Shotzi ran into the steel steps on her tank. Um, he tried to interfere. He's just, he's got to get off TV. I can't stand it. I can't stand it anymore, man. It's awful. The sooner the Robert Stone brand. And this stuff is off TV, the better. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Because, um, what's her name attacked? Uh, Mercedes Martinez. 
attack Shotzi Blackheart, and that's probably gonna be a mini program uh, for that. So I could see them facing off, maybe as a six match at Takeover, but we'll have to see. Triple Threat uh, qualifying match to get to the Fatal Five Way at Takeover Thirty. We had Johnny Gargano versus Roderick Strong versus Bronson Reed, and this match was great. This was a great match. This was my, by far, this was my favorite match of the entire night. Maybe on the entire Wednesday night show. It's probably going to be second, my favorite, uh, uh, third. I would have to put um, Cody and Eddie Kingston at number two. And I would have to put the Young Bucks versus the Butcher and the Blade in that Falls Count Anywhere match at number one. And this triple threat match go at number three. This was great, man. This was so good. I'm not a big Bronson Reed fan. I'm not a fan of Bronson Reed. I find him very boring. He's got no charisma. He's just a big dude who likes to hurt people. But but damn, he was really good in this match. Johnny Gargano was good. In, well, everybody was good in this match. And, and, and everybody brought their game. That's what I love. This is the NXT I want to see. Matches like this. I want to see I want to see good matches like this and not the shit we've been getting the past couple weeks, man. This is great. I lo I loved it. I loved this match. But I was shocked by the outcome, let me tell you. I didn't expect Johnny Gargano to win this match cuz you know, Johnny Gargano is at the point of his career in NXT where he really doesn't need a championship. He's been there for so long. He's a veteran there. He's like a veteran. He really doesn't need a championship right now, in my opinion. He's at the point in NXT where he should be uh, putting others over, in my opinion. Um, and then Roderick Strong. I originally thought he was going to win this match. You have the Undisputed Era, get back on track. Have Roddy participate in the Fatal Five Way at Takeover, and um, that's who I thought was going to win when I first saw this. Roddy Strong, but Bronson Reed actually won this match, which I was shocked by. I thought he was in there to take the pin from Roderick Strong, but uh, this is a big win for Bronson Reed, and I don't remember the last time he won a match, but this is a pretty big win for him. So, you know. Good from Bronson Reed. I'm sure he got the first spot at TakeOver. He qualified. You know, good for him. And I'm sure he'll do good in the uh, Fatal Five way at TakeOver. It, should he win? No. I'll, t I'll tell you who I think it sh should win. I think it should be Dexter Loomis. I think Dexter Loomis needs to walk out of TakeOver 30. Uh, your new NXT North American Champion. Uh, he's one of the best things on NXT. He's got one of the best... He's probably got the best character. Now that the Velveteen Dream's not there anymore. Um, Dexter Loomis has the best character in NXT. Uh, it might be a little too early, but Dexter Loomis. But, you know, screw it. I think it's time. He needs to be a champion. He would be a great North American Champion, in my opinion. That's who I want to... Um, win the North American Championship at TakeOver 30. But if it's not going to be Dexter Loomis, I think it should be Damian Priest walking out as the North American Champion. Uh, finally, uh, we'll go over these two matches very quickly. Uh, Tim Thatcher versus Zoni Loikin in a rematch from Great American Bash. Uh, again, this was a very physical match. This was uh, very good. I, I thought their match at uh, uh, Great American Bash was great. Uh, what this match wasn't better than that, but this match was pretty damn good, man. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed the physicality of Oni Lorcan, Timothy Thatcher. I enjoy watching Timothy Thatcher wrestler. He he's a really good wrestler, but the man has charisma of a crayon box. He has the charisma of a goddamn crayon box, and he needs to work on that very much. Um, that's all I gotta say about it, really. That's all I gotta say. And then the main event, we had Karrion Cross versus Dominic Dijakovic. 
Uh, this match was good. I'm not gonna say it was bad. It was given like 15 minutes. Um, I love the ending. I'll say that for much. When Dijakovic, his head was uh, placed, uh, trapped on the steel steps. Kevin Cross just kicked the steel steps and hurt Dijakovic's head. Dijakovic was knocked out cold. He wouldn't get up. Cross wanted to attack and the referee told him to get back in the ring. And um, Cross then brought Dijakovic back. He was elbowing Dijakovic straight in the face, blocking his arms. Keith Lee then came out. He said, stop the match, stop the match. Dijakovic was like, Keith, don't stop the match. Uh, Cross keep kept elbowing uh, Dijakovic. Cameron Cross is like, are you watching, Keith? And Cross put him in the cross jacket. And Cameron Cross won the match. The match was good, but I thought the ending was phenomenal. It was really phenomenal. It made Cameron Cross look like a beast. It made him look like an absolute beast in this situation. And um, you know what? It sold me on the match between Karrion Cross and Keith Lee at uh, TakeOver 30. Do I think it should happen? Absolutely not. I think it's... Uh, I think we all know Karrion Cross is going to win. That's why I have a problem with it. It's If, it's, if it was like a Brian Cage situation where... Brian Cage is just an interim challenger, and he's in there with Mox, with like, with like Keith Lee, and he's gonna look good in defeat. But we all know that Karrion Cross is gonna win this match, and Keith Lee's a transitional champion, and I, I absolutely hate that so much. I hate it that Keith Lee's being set up to be a transitional champion. It sucks. But uh, that was your NXT review. Right here on the Big Fight Field channel. That's all I got for you tonight. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you have not already. Subscribe right here on the Big Fight Field channel. If you have not already. We got Smackdown tomorrow. At least I'm debating about it. Because tomorrow is opening day. And my Phillies. Yes man. I'm a baseball fan. And my Phillies are back man. We're going to make the playoffs. We've got 16 team playoffs now. So I got no doubt. My Phillies are making the playoffs this year, man. So you can quote me on that one. Phillies are making the playoffs this year. Uh, huge Phillies fan, by the way. If, you, if you're watching this video and you're a baseball fan, comment down below. I want to know your favorite baseball team, man. I'm excited for the baseball season. Um, also, comment what you thought of this week's NXT. Well, uh, the Jet, the Taz, uh, Jim Ross, AEW Post Show, what they said. And uh, Keith Lee relinquishing his North American Championship. I really want your guys' thoughts on that as well. Like this video if you enjoyed my review for NXT. And then follow me on Twitter at Conlon underscore Joseph. And I will be back tomorrow, maybe. If I'm back tomorrow for my SmackDown review, I'm telling you guys right now. Fingers crossed I go no longer than 15 minutes. I say I go no longer than 15 minutes. I end up going about 30. So if I do it, if I do a SmackDown review tomorrow, uh, it's going to be short. All I know that's happening on the show is the bar fight between Jeff Hardy and Sheamus, and that I'm not even looking forward to. So, yep, that's all I got. Have a good night. Stay safe.